This Grit Week interview is presented by Coors Light. Um, okay, we have him. We got him. It is uh, He's won one Super Bowl, which we can get into because I have the theory that if you win one Super Bowl, you actually have none. Uh, he is a four-time MVP of the league. He has an 11-10 postseason record, uh, one in four in NFC Championship games. I'm just introducing you. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks ever. Aaron Rodgers, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay. I, do, I don't really know where to start well, other than, like, okay, how dare so, you? So big, how dare you? Big Cat will not ask you any any <laughs> questions that aren't threatening, so I'll start it because we, we ask everybody this yes, on Grit Yes, I forgot about that. I got what, blinded what with does, rage. What does Grit mean to you? <laughs> Wait, are you recording this? I know you like to – you don't trust the media. Do you I have don't your trust own you tape guys, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, what does Grit what does mean grit? to you? Uh, means you're from Pittsburgh. Ooh. Okay. That's actually an answer we haven't had yet. That's a great answer, And though. it's true. That's what's been ingrained in me since I was a second-year player in the league. I've been around, surrounded by Pittsburgh people, everybody from Mike McCarthy to Tom Clements to Ben McAdoo, Dom Capers, Darren Perry, Frank Signetti, a lot of Pittsburgh people. Mike and all Ditka. I talk about is just – Toughness. Man. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that is that true. Pittsburgh grit. Putting fries on sandwiches. Wait, yeah. so are you saying that you miss Mike McCarthy? I love Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't why don't you marry him? Why don't you just have him back here? Have him be your coach. I think he's doing pretty good in Dallas. Yeah. He's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did, all right. So we're we're gonna sidetrack. We got a lot of stuff to get to. I can't wait. Did Mike McCarthy ever smash a watermelon in front of you? I never saw that. No. Okay, because he did that with the Cowboys, and they won a big game, and we were wondering if that was like a party trick he pulled out for all of his teams. No, I haven't seen that. Okay. And he didn't ever did that in 14 years with okay. us. Okay. Yeah. Are you a little disappointed that he never thought am, highly enough of you? I am to disappointed. Do that? Now we did do a lot of fun things. The McCarthy Olympics was was one fun thing that we did every year in training camp, but no watermelons. What's no. what's involved in the McCarthy Olympics? There was a dunk tank. There Ooh. was a penalty shot on we had it at his property. Uh, he obviously like anybody would in Green Bay bought a 30 acre property. And then spent who knows how much money building this big berm so nobody could look at him on one side of the road. And uh, then he bought up all the houses around him. So he had to just a massive property. So it was, you know, there was like a 100-yard golf shot. There was a soccer thing. There was indoor basketball. There was golf, uh, you know, long drive. There was three-point competition. There was dunk tank. There was lawn darts, you know, all the good stuff, beer chugging, which I would have won probably. Mm -hmm. Whoa. I've well, seen that I mean, Bucks games. <laughs> That's I don't know. I have that written down. You you can't chug See, a beer. See, I'm gonna take all your information and just put it out there, <laughs> so you can't do anything. I have a feeling that you've done some opposition research going into this interview. No, of course not. I don't believe that for a second. You're confident enough. What's opposition research have to do? You know, with you know anything? stuff about mostly him. I would imagine. I do. Yes. Yeah. So you. Caleb told me a lot. Listen. Okay. All right. Let's just let's just cut through it. Put our cards on the table. If you had to go to jail or prison, which one would you pick? <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, well, jail is probably a little lighter jail, like than prison. County, county jail. Yeah. I've said. Yeah. I see. Listen. Maybe you a like lot of the people, Manhattan Correctional <laughs> Facility with like a, a real jacked up former cop as your cellmate for a night. Yeah. From what I've read, I think if anybody in this room, and I don't know some of the other people in here, um, and Tom has a sketchy past, but I think you would. Probably be most likely to go to jail between all of us. In here. Really? Yeah. I have committed some crimes. That's fine. But I also admit to the crimes I commit where you don't, and you yeah, kind of skirt around it. But listen, I'm I'm actually very <laughs> realistic about you as a player. I've always said you're a very good quarterback, very good quarterback, even league MVP four times. Right? I do think that you are you should be in jail or prison, and I'm fair to say you get to pick. I think jail's better than prison, so you can have that, and I will meet you halfway. Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, I'll work on it. Let's do it. Let's try a different angle. How close were you to retiring? Be honest. Close. I don't yeah. know how close is close. I was thinking about it, yeah. So, Jeopardy, that would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. Did yeah. you want that job? I did. Ooh. I feel like it's a thankless job, though. Because that's become one of those shows where no matter who's hosting it, it's almost like the Jeopardy community loves to like nitpick 
at the host and be like, you're not Alex Trebek. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the case. And I would say for many of the shows that I grew up watching, that is definitely the case. You know, Price is Right. Nobody can ever be Bob Barker. Best mm-hmm. show ever. But I will say one guy who's transcended all of that and even surpassed Louis Anderson, who nobody thought ever could, is Steve Harvey mm, with Family Feud. He's America's host. Family right. Feud. You know what I mean? That show went through so many different people. And I, although they didn't maybe to have one iconic host other than Louis, you know, I think uh, I think Steve definitely did that. But. So I was actually like, I, I, you know, like I said, I'm actually fair with you. You might think I'm not fair, but when you were, you know, saying that you want no to offense, be the, but I don't watch your stuff. What? My what? We don't think about you at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I either way, uh, that's fine. You don't have to watch anything. Uh, but but I'm, I was a big, being I'm a big fair. Portnoy fan. Like I'll watch his, you know, pizza reviews yep, yep, and yep. cookie reviews and yep. ice cream reviews. Mm-hmm. You know, that's you never fun. think about us. That's yeah. fine. I wanted you to have the Jeopardy job. I was pushing for it. Just so you could slam me or? No, I wanted you to have the job so you could be happy. And because clearly you don't like playing football. So it was like, let's get this guy happy. Oh, I'm a humanitarian. You want me, you want me out of the yes. NFC North. Yes. I got it. I also would like to say, like, I saw your golf game. See that? Yeah. yeah I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Ghost I saw your golf game. Liv is offering a lot of money. So have you thought about that? 150 for last place seems like a pretty... Pretty fair. It's a strong offer. Fair offer. There. So we, we were actually just talking about this the other week. We all have a number. Like Saudi Arabia could give me a hundred million dollars. Yes, instant. Yes. What's your number? Uh, probably around Tiger's number. Mm. Eight hundred million. So there is a chance. Yeah, I'm gonna make some calls. I'm gonna work my everybody's ass. Everybody's got off. a price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah, we've all got a price. I will work my ass off to try to get Live or Jeopardy or anything you want to do. I'm an Aaron Rodgers fan. I'm going to make sure that you're happy doing anything besides football. In three more years. Ooh, okay, oh, so you're saying it. you're going to retire after three years. Maybe four. Oh, fuck. You're never so, going to retire. You're never going to retire. You, I, wait, I just got one follow-up. Like, are you really sensitive about what I said last year after I scored that touchdown? Okay, let's get into it. Um, so you said, Is that what I, I, what, I what own you. you. Yeah. I fucking own you to the city of Chicago. The city of Chicago has $38.7 billion of debt. So, mm. are you going to pay that? That's a good one. I mean, what, no, I'm not. If you own that. us, no, I was. I don't think I'm saying that about the entire city. Now, maybe Soldier Field, every fan who was flipping me off, mm-hmm. you know, that yeah. negativity that was kind of coming my way. It was a pretty substantial FCC fine <laughs> that came Fox's way. Do you own well, that what was fine? <laughs> <laughs> you can't just say fuck on TV. I don't think it's supposed was, to right? be a 10 second delay. So. I think that's out of my hands. Yeah, well, I I actually own you because I'm a Packers owner. Fact. Yeah. So I own you, you own him. You own a piece of paper that has zero actual value. It's legit. I actually stole it from our goldfish. So our goldfish owned you. Then he died. Then I inherited the share. Now I own you. You own Big Cat. So I kind of, I guess I I inherit that debt. Okay. Do you feel bad for what you've done to my friend Big Cat? (laughs) No, I don't. At all, not at like all. not at all, because it, like I don't know if you can I think tell. He's this. conflicted, you know. He's conflicted. It's kind of like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Remember, you know, he's like I can feel the conflict within you, and he says this fake statement like, "Oh, there's no conflict. I move on." Inside, he went to Wisconsin. Right? Yeah, yeah. I hate you, though. I hate. The he's Packers. seen some of my all-time best moments on the field, not <laughs> only at Soldier Field, but also at uh, Ford Field. Mm-hmm. So I was a Lions fan for 24 hours. But. Deep and I, down. I went to go help support the Lions fans to try to beat the Packers, and then you threw the Hail Mary right in my face, directly in my face. Like I said, you've tortured me. They had me on the way over here. They were like, what's the worst moment, Aaron Rodgers versus the Bears? And I just started listing like a laundry list, and it goes on forever. Do you get extra, like, do you, do you actually relish in the fact that you beat the Bears the way you do every single year? Yes. Fuck. I mean, I, I mean, I knew the it's answer a, to that. Because it's a great sports town. You know, if we're beating up on a t- town that doesn't have great sports history, it's like just another win. But Chicago is Chicago. You got 100 years of Bears football, almost, right? You have the Chicago Bulls. I grew up a Bulls fan. You know, back on my old TV, we had like seven dials, you know, and you had to like hit it just right with the antenna doing. We could get WGN, so we could watch, you know, Cubs baseball. Mm-hmm. And Very Harry Curry. Carey. Yeah. You know, that was like iconic and Bulls basketball. So we're like, so I grew up watching yeah. Chicago sports. So, all right. What's your favorite memory? I'm just going to do this because everyone's going to want to hear it. What's your favorite memory of beating the Bears? What's your favorite Bears all time? Because there are a lot. I actually, like, weirdly, I'll tell you mine first. 
because there's you know Randall Cobb was terrible. Mm -hmm. The NFC Championship game was terrible. Uh, when you faked, you had an injury with Khalil Mack that first half, and you came back. Weirdly, though, the one that just kills me the most, because actually Hank and Dave, we were in Arizona for uh, some college football thing, and we watched Sunday Night Football. It was a game that you put up, like, I think you guys were up 42 nothing at half, and they just laughed at me for an entire half, and they're like, how do you watch this? That one hurts, I think, weirdly the most. So what's your favorite? Go ahead. Well, that one hurts because – it was 42, whatever, at halftime, and I'd thrown six touchdowns. Yeah. And the record is seven. <laughs> and <laughs> Mike was, and Mike was going to sit me. And I was like, ah, how about one more possession? <laughs> he goes, okay, one more. So we got down to the nine yard line and threw it three times, three incompletions. So, Ben, don't break. Yeah. So we went up 45 nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what's your favorite? Probably 2013. Okay. Only because I came back from my collarbone. Randall came back from his knee injury. And then somehow it was for the division. You know, after so many things happened, you know, for us to be able to be in it. And I believe that Detroit was still in it the week before. Then they had a bad loss to somebody. So then it came down to, like, our game. And, you know, neither team I don't think was great that year. Mm -hmm. But we're still playing for a home playoff game. And I start off, I throw a pick to Chris Conti um, on a rollout, and I'm like, shit, like, is it going to go like this you know, t tonight? And then I threw another pick to, uh, to Jennings at, in, I think, the second or third quarter. And then we had that weird, fluky pep, you know, cause a fumble, and mm -hmm. Boykin picks it up, and nobody's doing anything, and he runs in the end zone. And, and on the last drive, we converted uh, three fourth downs. You know, fourth and like inches on a dive play, a fourth and three on a throw to Jordy. But the last one was was pretty amazing. So what? This is this is terrible. I don't, I, I actually hate that I'm doing this. this. Is actually my least favorite thing I've ever done coming here uh, right now. But you when look you good saw though. That, you look good. I, I, thank I you. Tell you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean sometimes. No, I mean I, you know I know that we've all struggled with our own issues, and I know weight's been kind of up and down for you. But I feel like you look. Well, you don't. You don't really watch good. anything I do. No, I just heard. Oh, okay, I, I okay. Heard, you heard yeah, about the I weight. Heard. All right. Yeah. When you you're, saw, looking, you're looking good. Thank you. When yeah. you saw, like, what did you see when Chris Conti was just not there? Were you like, holy, did you, did you think you were hallucinating? No one's ever been more open in the history of the NFL. We have to understand, you have to put it all together. I think mean, people throw blame on uh, Chris or, or Major guy. or whoever it was on that side. Um, I think Bowman was outside as well on the play. But the you guys brought seven and we blocked with six. Right, so there should have been a free guy. So it was really the the rush pattern that got you. Now the backside, Evan Dietrich Smith and, and I believe Josh Sitton did a good job of blocking like two or three. And then John Kuhn comes over and cuts Julius. So I guarantee on the defense that they were expecting the ball to come out quick. Right. And that's why they were playing at ten yards. In fact, there was probably a illegal contact on the play. I think Major Wright just dropped Jordy, who was in the uh, number three in that in that spot. But um that was a fun feeling. Mm. He was so open. He was so open. Well, because they're playing for you, <sighs> what they should have done was change the. They should have changed the call. I mean, I knew what the, I knew what the check call was. Okay, uh, was that one of those plays where when when the when you get up to the line, you see what they're doing, you just know it's a touchdown. No, I don't know it's a touchdown at all. I was literally trying to throw it hot to Jordy, and then I felt John come out because I didn't think he was going to block Peppers because he was Pep should have been the free guy in the play. But John was smart, and he saw that Evan and Josh had blocked those guys, so he came over and cut Julius. So question off of that, real That's question. That's which is why I think Major hit Jordy because I was going to throw it to Jordy on right. like a stop route. So off of that, real question, real football question. W at what point in your career have you been able to be like, I just see everything better than like, you know, I know what the defense is going to do. I've done this so many times. Like you almost feel like you're playing at a higher level than everyone else. It takes a long time, and I don't ever feel like that. I don't think consistently. It's more certain teams you play or certain defense coordinators, you start to get in a rhythm. And even in a game, they ran that same pressure, I think, two other times with the same signal. So we came out, they did a signal, I made a check, and was thinking about throwing a hot to Jordy. Now, it all just came together because John made a great block, and it shouldn't have been like that. But 
you can get into a rhythm with seeing certain things. I think the most important thing for a quarterback is to figure out what I'm doing, and once you can wipe your mind from that, to be able to see what the defense is doing takes you to a whole nother level because then you're reading the fronts, you're seeing signals, you're hearing things out there that you might not hear if you're just thinking about what my guys are doing and what this guy's doing and this guy's doing. You know, it's playing on the other side of the football is how you kind of take that jump. Because mm-hmm. it does feel like it at times where, again, there's going to be a compliment, but like you are – you're seeing things and processing things so much faster than everyone else that it feels almost unfair. I don't know if that's just us watching it and being like, holy shit, Aaron Rodgers, or you actually feel that yourself where you're like, I'm processing this so much faster than everyone else. I feel like that sometimes for sure. But it's just certain games. Some games, teams will be so good at disguise, you're guessing a lot. Yeah. And sometimes you guess right and sometimes you guess wrong and, and there's going to be mistakes. But certain teams that we played over the year, you kind of feel the rhythm of certain guys and the alignments and the movements and different things to, you know, it's always a chess match with Brian Erlacher because he was so good. At, they would make everything look the exact same and then run a couple of different coverages out of it and he would change all his checks. So we'd be studying the checks the week before and have like three or four word identifications and we get in the game and he'd call the same word and mean something completely different. So it's, but he was doing what I was doing on the other side of the ball. Right. And he could play that game back to the offense and mess with you, and, and um, but I th- I feel like you and I can can be like Brian and I because Brian and I we were on the field now we were, you know I can't say we were friends but you know, we were harsh competitors and I respected him and tackled him once, um, but he picked me off quite a few. T- I think the most in my career is, is Brian picking me off three times, but uh, but now we're friends. Yeah, I mean I it spins on your Brian. I feel like I feel like we could uh, These guys know they see me watch. Like I I do really truly hate you, but I also watch you and I'm like, holy shit, like the plays he's making are insane. Like that's a fact. I I I feel like we could hang out, we could, you know, have a Guinness and and Coors eat some Light, pizza yeah. and yeah. Coors Light. Yeah, yeah. Coors definitely Light. Coors Light sponsor. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'll be honest. I like you. I don't like what you've done to my friend because you probably aged him like 30 well, years. Well, you're a Washington fan, so you don't care. Yeah, but you don't watch anything that would do. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I'm a nihilist, okay? Like, I, I'm convincing myself to root for Carson Wentz this year. That's how bad things have got. I'm, an, I'm actually a Commanders fan. Don't forget about that name change. But I do like you. Um, I noticed that you had almost like a significant change in perspective over the last few years, you become, it seems like you're having more fun from what I've seen. You're enjoying your teammates. You're enjoying the process. You're enjoying what you get to do uh, while you're still, still able to do it, which I think is very cool. And you have a good perspective on like where football fits into your life. I think a lot of people don't have that, especially from the outside. So I guess my question is, when did you first try ayahuasca? <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Straight from the source? What source? Ecuador. <laughs> I don't think it's me. <laughs> I don't think that would be the source. Uh, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. By yeah. the way, the tattoo looks better in person. Thank you. That's I, another thing I admire about you. Yeah. You're you're totally go ahead. You're like, listen, if you want to put a needle in my arm and inject whatever you want in there, I'm totally on board with that. I could never do that. <laughs> well, I actually. It was very very important. These, I immunize this part of my body right here. <laughs> Could you, so could you actually all... explain the tattoo? Because we we're trying to figure it out when the picture came out and trying to analyze what it was. No, I, I think your analyzation is probably better than my explanation. So you were just like, "Give me something cool." I actually, I did not make fun of you for the tattoo because I am. I what are you? Thirty eight? No, you're you're forty. Are you forty two? You should probably retire. Keep going. Yeah. Um, I I do want to get a tattoo. I don't have. Where, any. Are you? What are you in your late thirties? I'm thirty seven. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. I'm gonna. Why don't we retire together? I'll walk away from this. You walk away from that. We'll just do it together. Yeah, sounds good. We both made enough money. Let's just fuck it. Let's yeah. get out of here. Let's You're go play so golf. So rich, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go play golf. Come on. But yeah, I didn't. I I actually respect the fact that you got a tattoo so late in life because I want to get a tattoo at some point, but I don't. It's hard to be like the late 30s, early 40s guy and be like, oh, here's my first tattoo. Because either you're a tattoo guy or you're not, but you now are. I am, and I don't care Fuck. about whether you like it or don't like it. No, I said I like it. I would it. like I you to like it because I, 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 I like you, and I want to like you, but I actually don't care. Yeah. We, th- we think that it's cool. I think cool. Our, our analysis was what it looks like the inside of Kyrie Irving's brain. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I also said I live in Brooklyn now, so I was like, yeah, Humble I, brag. I basically see that tattoo every single day. Humble so, brag? Yeah. Yeah. Brooklyn's a humble brag. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Here's a real question. Huge brag. Live in Brooklyn, a, yeah. a place that has like live in Brooklyn, three yeah. million people. Yuppie. Yeah. Can we run through some uh, just like some football scenarios here? Because as Big Cat was saying, you I'm are sure, yeah. you yeah. see everything before it happens. Mm, you're can't playing yep. seven dimensional chess out there. Mm, yes. All right. Uh, you score a touchdown. You're down 14 <laughs> in the fourth <laughs> quarter. <laughs> you score a touchdown. Time's running out. Do you go for two the first time, or do you wait to go for two later? I like going for two later, but our analytics guy likes going for two now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another one, let's say it's fourth and inches at midfield. Coach sends out the punt team. What would your play call be? A little hard count probably? Fake punt. Fake punt? Yeah, yeah. they'd never know it's coming. Okay, then the last one I had here, uh, hypothetically, fourth down at the eight-yard line. There's two minutes, nine seconds left. You're down eight. Mm. You kick a field goal there, just take the points? Yeah, just take the points. Just take the points. That's it? Yeah. yeah. What was the line? Uh, I think it was three, three Yeah, it half. didn't help us. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You guys, very upset about yeah, that. Yeah, you guys hit us in the points? Yeah. 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 I, I, so every time we talk to your coach, LaFleur, um, we give him a hard time about that. And he's put all of it on you. He's like, Aaron wanted to you know, kick a field goal. He wanted to get off the field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He, like he didn't home. trust his arm he was in that late, situation. He was late for a flight to go hang right. out with Miles Teller in the jungle. Yeah, so yeah. it was. he wanted to get out of there. We're like, all right, fine. It's credit to him. He's never said it publicly. I think maybe he was thinking if I get three now, then we stop him, get three again, get onside kick, and then another three. <laughs> yes, yeah. 32, three. 32, 31. Yes, yeah. yes. Champ yes. Championship. No, but, yes. but seriously, I, I, I was joking around earlier, but I, I have noticed that you've like changed your perspective as your career has matured. Um, at, do you think that you love football more than you did when you first started playing in the NFL? I think I have a better perspective about life now than I did as a 21-year-old and a more of an appreciation and gratitude for still doing it. I mean, that's the reason. Um, the other part is just, you know, people like Dan and others, you know, have created this idea of what I am and what I'm about and and who I am, felon. Uh, felon. Yeah, I should be in jail, arrested. Mm -hmm. And it's been fun to, you know, do McAfee's show, uh, be a little more open with the media, finally do, you know, this with you guys, mm -hmm. and hopefully let people see a different side. Uh, but either way, I'm not trying to be anything other than myself. And I do, I think, deep down realize this chapter of my life's coming to a close yes. soon. So I'm Very trying soon. to enjoy it a little bit more than uh, when you're 21. You're thinking you play forever, and 38, you're a fucking old guy. You know, yeah. you're, Very 30, old. you're 38. You're like, damn, like the years have really gone by, and I'm thankful for it. You know, I want to leave this place better than I found it. I'm gonna throw you a great retirement party. That's my promise to you. We'll go hang out, do whatever you want. You just say the word. Maybe next Saturday, we'll do it. All right, okay. we're gonna we're gonna fucking hang out. Uh, off that, are we gonna fly on that jet you flew in here on? Yeah, nice. That's nice. grip, baby. Yeah. It's actually hey, a listen, Saudi jet. Nice. But you had me by the street. I mean, like be, behind the scenes, people don't realize I had to basically beg Aaron for three weeks. I was annoying him with text messages. I wanted to like kill myself every day that I had to text you and be like, "Hey, will you come on the show?" But I will see, suck up. I, for, I will you. suck it up for the for the people. I got you. The people want to see the the. I I, there you. was we were talking about it. There was a small part of me when we were gonna go down to Austin. I was like, he's probably not even gonna be in Austin, and he's just getting me to fly there, and I'm just gonna we're gonna show up. And see, that's what you do. There. So you present this image of me, this perspective of me that's totally doesn't match the facts. So no, you were you were you've you been were, doing it for years. I'm gonna give you credit. You, know, you were very years. nice on text. You said I want to do it. I just got. I'm gonna out sue my you for libel, and <laughs> you can choose uh, a cash payout or jail. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna put you okay? in jail. Oh. So you're down in Austin. How was doing the Alex Jones show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you were you were very nice in, in accommodating uh, the media part. I do have a question off that. Do you get a little bit of like pleasure out of trending and having people like you? You've done some cryptic Instagram posts and some cryptic <laughs> tweets. I think like, you're funny. yeah. No, you're like. There's been many times where you've posted something and I'm like, it's over. He's done. He's leaving Green Bay, <laughs> and like I get my hopes up. Are you doing that, like knowing you're just you just like to rile the people up because you do it very well? Every now and then, there's a situation where you might, you know, push the send button before counting to ten and talking to a friend and making sure this is something you want to put out there. And I think we're all probably guilty of that. You for sure. I've read some of yours. 
I mean, do you want to get into the, the one tweets? That, the one that Devante was uh, was uh, him and I kind of put our heads together and you know wanted to. Stir some shit up. Probably. Oh, the last dance. Yeah. Oh, that one had me so happy. <laughs> was I was funny. telling everyone, I was like, "It's over. It's over." They're, and it was done, right? Yeah, it <laughs> was. Said, I guess it was. He's in Vegas. Shit. Yeah. So you said, like, you know, there's certain image out there of you that you've tried to. Well, you don't care really what like strangers think necessarily, but it's not necessarily accurate. Big cat. I mean, Dan. Yes, I do care about him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. How How would you describe yourself? I I just I think in general I'd like to I'd like to present myself how I see myself. So unapologetically authentic, you know, and if you like, I mean, you like me or don't like me, that's not my concern at this point. You know, my concern is just speaking the truth and, and, you know, and people say, Oh, well, immunization, vaccination. Yeah, I did. I said yeah. that a lot. Yeah, you did. Yep. But how many people do you think you killed? What's your count? How many grandmothers? See, Let's just do grandmothers. I mean, I know you guys are fucking around. I don't find that that part funny. I really don't. Okay. Like, oh shit, we got John Cena. No, nah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, the uh, it, it actually is one of my favorite things I was able to do off of that whole immunization thing is tweet that you should be in jail, and then I would have people who get the joke, and then there would be like a ton of people who'd be like, "Oh, you like you think COVID is so real? You should be in jail." And it was just my mentions would just be a mess. And probably a lot time. of people said, "Fuck yeah, put him in jail." Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. No, yeah. I have an army. Get that liar in jail. Yes. Get him in jail. Get him in jail. Yeah. <laughs> get him in jail. Probably. Yeah. Um, okay. A real question. Those are the ones you were all retweeting and liking. Oh yeah, I was like, "Yup, good, <laughs> yeah. good, yeah. point. good point, good point, good point." Um, <laughs> real question, kind of a grit question for Grit Week. Please. Um, Did you know? First of all, let me. Do, I, I just I, I need to share this. I feel like. AJ Hawk would never forgive me if I didn't. But in our old grading system, so we play a game, and the next day, you know, every play is graded. At one point, we went to this huge grading format where there was like 20 different things somehow that were graded. And I swear to God, on every single play, there was a grit grade for Whoa. each player. Grit grade. There was a NM for needs more, and ST was standard, and then an alpha plus. So, alpha plus. Yeah, you know if you got that alpha plus grit grade, you they probably did some fucking. That's that's a that's John Coon grade. Incredible. Right there. Awesome. Oh, John, yeah, for sure. He probably. And where's the John in, from? In grit. Yeah, uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. 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 Grit grade. We got to start grit grading grit grade. ourselves. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Um. All right. So grit grade. I would, I would grade this interview on the grit grade schedule of <laughs> uh, standard of, somewhere between ST and NM. Okay. Okay. So we got we well, got some time. Yeah, I don't I don't want to be the, an yeah, alpha plus yet. All right. Yeah. So this is the real question. This will this will help the alpha plus. Um, your story of getting to the NFL. So you got you were lightly recruited. Right. You. I think I read that you at one point were thinking about like just quitting football and going mm. to be a lawyer. Right. I was thinking about it. How yeah. how close were you at that point? Like, because I just want to go home and fantasize about like a different world where you just never played football. But how – because you, you stuck it out. And it is – you know, people think, Aaron Rodgers, your talent is so out of, out of this world, they don't think grit. But then when you read about, you know, having to start at Chico – what was it, Chico? Butte. Uh, Butte. Yeah, right right by Chico. And then going to Cal and not getting all of those scholarship offers and, like, you know, falling in the draft. Were there moments where you're like, this just isn't going to work out? For sure. And it was – when I think about it, there was like one day that kind of course corrected everything. The It was in February of 2002, and the baseball coach who had been my JV football coach had been kind of prodding me to to maybe come out and, and play baseball and pitch, and I hadn't played since eighth grade. And so the pitchers and catchers were like playing catch on the blacktop or something, and he said, oh, come out and throw a little bit, and they had the gun out there. And that – one day, I think, changed my – kind of turned back on my competitive fire. Really? Because I came out of the, the winter, had no offers, uh, and really didn't know what I was going to do. Obviously, the JUCOs in the area wanted me to come play there. But when you're growing up, you don't not dream about playing, you know, JUCO ball. You dream about playing on Saturdays on ABC with Keith Jackson calling your games. You're right. not thinking about playing at Cowan Stadium in Oroville, California, in front of 500 people. But – Playing baseball that spring really kind of gave me my competitive fire back. And then I played in this all-star football game that summer. And I say all-star very lightly because it was uh, Northern California, kind of north-south. Um, there were only a few of us from that game who kind of went on to play in college. Um, but 
that kind of gave me my fire back. I went to junior college at Butte, had a fantastic time, still very close with my coaches there, and then the rest is kind of history. That's crazy. So there is like, there's an alternate world where if that invite doesn't happen, not saying that you would have stopped playing sports, but you might have been like, all right, I'm going to figure out something else in life. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a world. I was dealing with a major knee injury that was frustrating for two years in, in high school. And I was like, maybe I'll just rehab and maybe I'll get surgery or I don't know what I wanted to do. And then that day kind of, oh, okay, let me get into this next challenge. How can I be the best pitcher this year? And that kind of got my mindset uh, adjusted and that competitive fire kind of came back. And what was that guy's name? I just want to know for personal reasons. I just want to call him up and... Uh, Daniel Katz, I think. Motherfucker. Oh, I'm going to build a time machine. I want to find that guy, stop yeah. That, stop yeah. that man. If I build a time machine, one thing I can do is find that that <laughs> baseball coach and be no. like, don't invite Aaron to practice today. <laughs> 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 then you're a lawyer. You would have been a terrible lawyer. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? Yeah, you would have been a terrible lawyer. Why? I can just feel it. Nah, you just wouldn't have been a good lawyer. I just know it. It's all I got right now. Probably true. I'm grasping. All right. Uh, you got to hurt me with the Bears stuff. What's the worst loss that you've had? What's the one that stuck the most? Oh, the NFC Championship against Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a very fun game from my perspective. If one play goes our way out of all these, you know, they don't call an offsides, I throw a pick to Sherman. Obviously the onside kick, fake field goal, two point conversion, you know, all the there's like eight plays. If one of them goes our way, we had a pick, and the guys, you know, our guys slid down instead of running back inside the thirty. And one of those plays goes our way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we we uh, we win that. We played New England, who we had beaten earlier that year at home, but we beat them twenty six twenty one that year. But uh, yeah, that one hurts. That was a fun one. Always gonna hurt. I was just like, this is really happening. This is really happening. Holy shit, is this still happening? And it just kept on happening. Do you have a, a photographic memory? <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> I remember the bar I was at in Chicago, and I was like, "This is." Tell me more. Happening. Tell me more about it. It was so. Um, what, did you guys like run? You you didn't run offense at the end of the game, right? It was there time left, and you and you kneeled it, or no? no. I know the onside kick. Obviously. They scored. Yeah, and then they went for two, and he threw up that wild one, and somehow guy caught it and yep. scored it. So we're down three. Then we went down. And got a field goal. That's right. You kicked a field goal to instead tie of it. yeah, right, yeah. right. And there was, but there was moments where it felt like your offense wasn't. You guys were kind of playing not to lose situation towards the end, where it's like, all right. Oh, the last couple of possessions. Yeah, and I that was that was one of my favorite parts. I was like, what are they doing? Like they've been able to. Well, we'd get we'd got after them in twenty the entire game, and twenty personnel, so two backs and three receivers, and that was kind of the plan. And then we went cut the last couple of possessions in twenty two personnel, so two backs, two tight ends, like a jumbo set, which, you know, Seattle's iconic, you know, one of the best defenses of the generation for sure, the last 30 years probably, uh, the Legion of Boom, and, and people forget how good they were up front as well. And obviously with they had KJ and Bobby at backer, you know, they were as stout as can be, but they had a front that was pretty nasty. But we had found some things in 20 personnel that got after them pretty good in the last couple of possessions. We, you know, didn't do it. But, uh, you know, as well as we played on defense – that day, we picked them off five times. We had the ball inside the two twice and kicked two field goals. Yeah. Which that, oh, that obviously that hurt. Was awesome. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was there great. were a lot of things. That was a great game. And then Russell things. Wilson passing overtime. Yeah. Oh. But where were you? Where were you? I was that? in a bar. Um, I have a friend who's a diehard Packers fan. And as it was happening, I started to slowly move away from him because I thought he was going to legitimately punch me. So by the end, when Russell Wilson threw the touchdown, I was like basically standing in the doorway, like away from where we were sitting the whole day because I was like, he's going to try to fight me. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. And then he was just defeated and it was just beautiful. The whole thing. Can I ask you a, a non condescending, in a non condescending way, a question? Yeah. I'm going to. That, that was a question was kind of hard. That was a rhetorical that, question. That intro question was a little bit condescending. It was rhetorical. <sighs> yeah. Okay. It, it, truly, is it hard for you as a Bears fan yeah. that some of your greatest moments are cheering against me when the Bears aren't playing? Okay, good question. Um, very good question. No, it's, it's actually great because what I've told everyone is um, – I'm very realistic about the Bears. Not a great franchise. Just don't do the right things for the most part. 
every year I look forward to the playoffs and the game that you're going to lose. <laughs> and I've told this story on the air, but like when you guys lost to San Francisco this year, we were watching the game in New Jersey and I drove, drove back to Brooklyn, brag, um, and I listened to uh, Tauscher, ESPN Wisconsin, for three hours I sat in my car. At my, I had arrived home. It's a 20-minute drive. I had ride home. I sat for three hours listening to callers be like, blow up Lambo, get 12 out of here. We need to build a dome. This team isn't built for the outside. And it was that was the highlight of my NFL season. And I have no problem <laughs> saying that because I know I'm a loser. That's the best part. I've come to grips with the fact that I'm a loser. So, yes, watching you lose in the playoffs is my – that's my Super Bowl. And I've, w I've won a lot of Super Bowls. If you do it that, that way, more than you. <laughs> yeah, I like that spin zone oh, I just did dynasty. in my head. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I have a dynasty you, cooking. You actually, Good answer. Do Good you answer. like playing in the cold? I do. Really? Because I, I, I know Brett was saying like he had that amazing record in the playoffs and Lambeau Field was a place nobody could win in, and he hated playing in the cold. But you enjoy it. I do. I feel like it slows the rush down. And I think it, that kind of evens some things out up front. So we play in a front that's really, really dynamic – Footing can get in the way, especially if playing in Chicago in the cold. That, that field's terrible. It's unique. It's, yeah. it's I mean, it's a sand pit. It's, is, uh, is there, uh, like, one coach that you go up against? And you know that, you know, we were talking earlier about how sometimes you can see exactly what's going on. Sometimes things are more disguised. But one coach that you know that when you play against them, they're going to throw some stuff at you. They're going to disguise things, and you're going to be a little confused. I think Todd Bowles has done a good job at that over the years. I think he's a really good coach. Um, he has a... You can always tell schematically what coaches uh, are the best based on how the league uh, adjusts. And offensively, you know, when this offense that we're in has kind of, there's like nine different teams running now. And it started with Mike Shanahan and his son Kyle running it really, really well in Atlanta going to the Super Bowl. And then everybody copied it. And then there was a Seattle defense. I think um, you're seeing the Rams defense that kind of branched out across the league. There's probably six, seven teams running the same thing. And then there's some teams trying to do what, uh, um, what Coach Bowles does uh, with the pressure package. Mike Zimmer, for a long time, was as hard as it came playing against because he, they had eight up looks, you know, double A gap and then double edges, and then they had every variation, both edge guys, four to a side, four to the other side, both inside guys, drop those guys out, and the best disguisers in the game, including – you know, Harrison Smith has been there forever, but the backers, when Barr and Kendricks were in there, you know, and they had that front that played together for a long time, it was one of the toughest defenses to go against. Yeah, uh, your coach was telling us before you came in, you know, one way to counteract that is by running a lot of motion mm -hmm. on offense. He said you love that. Mm -hmm. He said that you're really enjoying love motion. all the motion. <laughs> That's what he gave you, yeah. yeah. Why is that? So we're idiots, obviously. I mean, you've heard us talk for the last 20 minutes, so you know that we're fucking <laughs> morons. Yes. But no. But what it, what is it interesting about, people? Man. <laughs> what is it about installing like a, a motion offense that you're like, God damn, this is kind of a pain in the ass? Because to me, it's just like you go out there and you do what coach says. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he's smart and he knows what he's talking about, then yeah, you do what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of the smartest in the game, but that implies that you've maybe played for some coaches that weren't smart. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if the scheme is smart and makes sense, then. Yeah, you do it. Mm. How much Sometimes in this scheme, and I tell Matt all the time, this scheme has flaws. I, I think this scheme uh, is way different. I, I grew up in the West Coast offense. The West Coast offense, I think, is the most beautiful offense ever created. It's very, it's about timing and rhythm and balance, and everything makes sense protection-wise. You know where your hots are. You know where your eyes are going every single time. You know how the concepts fit together. This is a schematic offense. That was not a schematic offense. That was built on timing and precision and rhythm and guys being in the right spot at the right time and putting the ball in the proper number. Um, and, it, you know, started with Bill Walsh and Montana and, and uh, Paul Hackett and on down to the iteration that we got to, and I loved it. In that offense, though, it's not predicated on, off on motion. It's predicated on uh, winning one-on-one -on -one matchups and then being accurate throwing the football. And so that's what I grew up in. I marveled at Peyton Manning during his prime would run all two by two and three by one formations with no motion. Just because you want to look at it and use this cadence variation to get movement and then be able to, to go with tempo as well. When you have so much motion, it's hard to get tempo going. You know, it's because you always got to make sure you're set and you got a motion, maybe a double motion, maybe this thing, maybe this adjustment off of it. I just like sometimes, and I tell them the same thing. I'm not telling you guys anything I wouldn't tell him. I was got after him today because every freaking play, there's goddamn motion. I'm like, can we run one play 
without emotion and pass so we can get some tempo going because I like to switch the tempo. But in this offense, it does put a lot of stress on the defense because you have emotion, you have an outside zone look, you have a guy sealing backside, and we have off of that, we have a run, we have a screen, we have a keeper, we have an action pass. So you have so many different looks off the same stuff. Um, that's why it works. Uh, it's a little frustrating when you grew up in the West Coast offense and your mindset is all about protection and X's and adjustments and different things when you're playing an offense that doesn't have a lot of those things and maybe could use it at times. And also when it kind of fucks up the protection uh, schemes and lanes and, and identification sometimes, it just makes it, uh, you know, it makes it a little extra extra strenuous sometimes on the quarterback. I'm starting to think you might know football. A little bit. Do you think football yeah. is beautiful? I do. I when can done, tell. When done right, yeah. What's the most beautiful play? Good question. Oh. We used to we used to run this play many, many times. Unfortunately, hit the Bears against it a few times. But hard play action to the left, half roll back to the right, and then a double move by 87 off the front side with some sort of adjust, you know, some sort of complimentary route, either a deep cross or a kind of a throwback route. But it was the weave, like corner post, off of hard action. And we probably hit it for, I don't know, seven or eight touchdowns over the uh, kind of three or four year span. And when that one comes clean and, you know, safety goes and doubles the X and Jordy's, you know, up there and running this corner and you just know he's going to be wide open. I think that's a pretty play. Shit. I mean, you can tell, like, that, yeah, that's football is beautiful. Um, we know you got to go in a second. We got a couple more questions. We'll wrap it up quickly. Thank you, though. I do appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate you guys coming up here. Yeah. You know, I mean, we dropped everything. I hope it's all a write off and you guys, you know, aren't, <laughs> aren't out of pocket. No, Dave paid for all of it. David? Yeah, Good. yeah okay. Dave paid for Yeah, all thank of you, Dave. It. You think the Barstool Fund was going to restaurants? <laughs> 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 um, all right. Favor we'll go quick here. Favorite throw you've ever thrown? Is it the one against the Cowboys? I like that one. I liked the couple in the Super Bowl that felt good. But my favorite throw is the one that you got to witness in Detroit. Fuck. Just because I don't think I've ever thrown a ball that came off that good and went that high and that far. You killed Detroit Dunn. His soul left his body. If you watch the video back, like he literally, his his body, he, he had no spine. He had no bones. He just collapsed. You killed that man. Uh, he, is he, he's still alive, though, yeah, right? Yeah, he is still okay, alive, yeah, I okay. think. But he, uh, like, he, like, like spiritually, yeah, he's dead. Yeah. He made it back. He the recovered. Worst, the worst he part recovered. about that, before that video, they were doing the math on how they were going to make the playoffs. They're like, I, we win this game, we win that. And I was like, all right, guys, but it's fucking Aaron Rodgers. Like, this is not over, and then you did that. Um, all right, let's, we'll wrap up with a couple of last questions. I, is the, the discount double-check the championship belt? You think that's a little ironic now, since you haven't won one in a long time? Yes. Okay. All right. Good answer. Good answer. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, Here's one. Uh, yeah. do, do you think that if the NFC North was a better division, then you'd have better success in the playoffs? Is Big Cats or is Bears actually not preparing you enough? Mm. No, I Good think the, the, the North is a tough division. It's a gritty division. That's I think we can all agree on that. It is gritty. Okay. Um, when you said that the 49ers were going to regret not drafting you um, – when they went, when they're four and zero against you in the playoffs, is that regret or is that what is that? What, what would you describe that as? Uh, how many Super Bowls have they won in the last eighteen years? Doing the math right now. Um, I mean, the lights went out. That kind of screwed them. Oh no, count. that actually helped them. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They didn't well, win fine. that one. They also yeah. had they also had one of the most iconic defenses in the last thirty years as well. Mm -hmm. And didn't yeah. win mm -hmm. any. Before no. When you're dropping down on, on draft day, are you like doing the math? Like, please God, somebody pick me before Washington. Well, Washington would have picked Campbell, I think, anyway. You so, think so? Ooh. They, supposedly they liked him more than they liked me. Hmm. I was, I was honestly good. thinking when the Raiders trade up at 23, I was like, whoa. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe take somebody else? When it's Green Bay, and you know the situation that you're going into. It's, you know, Brett Favre's the guy. Yeah. Also, it's cold. You're Cali boy. Yeah. Were you at first like, uh oh, shit? Yeah. Of course. I mean, I couldn't have picked it out on a map, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm pretty good with states and capitals and geography. But the Packers was the worst interview out of the Combine. So it was at the Combine. I was sitting in front of a group like this, but camera right here, Mike Sherman, all the the whole room. And it was a tough interview. I felt like they were grilling me. I thought this was like, you know, a little like love session where we're kind of loving, you know, you're loving me up a little bit and I'm kind of, you know, 
being, you know, nice and funny maybe, but it was not that. And I came back, I was like, well, it doesn't matter. They're picking 24th. I'll never last that long. <laughs> Damn, another sliding doors moment. Famous last word. Um, yeah. I love asking athletes this. What's the one thing that fans just totally get wrong in terms of your day-to-day, -day, like season, life, everything? This is where you can basically subtweet everyone. It's a grind, but it's a balanced grind, I think. A lot of guys like to talk about, you know, they're, oh, I'm up at 5.30 watching film and doing this and grinding all night. That's overkill to me. You know, as somebody who's had success in the league, it's a it's balance. People are always like, oh, your schedule must be crazy. Like, I got to talk to you in the offseason. No, 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 no. Like, Wednesday and Thursday are busy, and you Tuesday you're working on the plan. But the schedule in the NFL is pretty nice. And we're creatures of habit. We love the routine. Um, it's a mental grind. But... It's not a crazy. I feel like there's a yeah. schedule when you're watching film too. It's like you can yeah. watch eight hours of film a day, and at some point you start to phase it out. You can't watch eight hours of anything. A you day. can't. No. I mean, why would you want to do that? Do you have yeah. anything in your contract saying you have to watch four hours over the course of a week? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah. All right. Last question. Uh, rowback question. Put in promo code Take. You get twenty percent off your rowback purchase. Uh, Q zips polos. Look at these. These are rowback. No big deal. I was gonna say I like those shirts. Yes, yeah. thank you. We actually mostly his. You want, you oh, want okay. This one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Give I, it to am him. I gonna get some swag? I don't want yeah, yours. No, 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 no. Send me some you swag. I will send you some swag. I don't want that. I will send you some swag. What do you got underneath this? Some mean shirts. Oh, actually, you'll like what I have underneath. It's another podcast I do. It's called Macro Dosing. Right up your alley. Nice. Love it. I got a uh, gift for you. What are you macro dosing? Uh, you know. Pizza? Yeah. You know. What are you, an XL? Yeah. Here you Sometimes. go. It's a large. Hey, thank it's you. It's large. Yeah. I'll fit into yeah, it. Yeah, lose some weight. I appreciate um, that. All right, I got you a gift because I did say we were you were nice enough to do this, um, so please accept my gift. I guess that's not a question, but please accept my gift if you want to open it on air. This is a joke? I got you. No, I got you your favorite joke. scotch. Is snake in here or something? Nope. They told me this is Aaron's favorite scotch, so I got him his favorite scotch in the entire world. What is there? Something going to bite me? So there you go. There's a card in there, too. <laughs> if you want to read the card to the people. Hey, thank you. Yeah, that's Wolfburn. your favorite scot scotch, right? my favorite scotch. Yeah. Wolfburn. I actually couldn't find your favorite scotch, so I just got you that. Yeah, you didn't but try you like very it, hard, right? obviously. Yeah, I love it. Okay, yeah. all right. And then you maybe thank read you. the card, and then we'll end there. So. Oh, how's the COVID toe, by the way? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, it's doing good. <laughs> the lesions are gone, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What do I open first? Uh, no, those are just, that was just filler, so it looked like the bag was bigger. Uh, I just had to find random pictures and stuff and just, <laughs> what? Oh, is it? Oh, it's the shit. same picture. It's the same picture. It's the same picture. Is that Shane McClellan? That's the highlight of his career, oh, I think. It is. The high, it is. Yeah. And that, what a, listen, if you told me when we drafted him in the first round, he would break your collarbone, I'd be like, and do nothing else, I'd be like, sign, sign me up. That's, yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> oh, there's another, oh, shit. There's another one there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So thank I said you. thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. What did I say in there? I can't remember what I wrote. Thanks for coming on PMT. You're the worst. <laughs> love PMT, not love, just dash PMT <laughs> and Shay McClellan. Yeah. yeah. Two of them on here. Thank you to Shay. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Well, thank you, Aaron. She actually apologized after that. It was a nice apology on the field. That was 20, 2013. On the field before that game, yeah, that yeah. was that was a that was a great moment when you got hurt. <laughs> I mean, it was for me personally. Uh, I don't root for injuries. They, did, but when they happen, what are you going to say? No. Let me just say this. Let me ask you a question to finish this. Twenty eighteen, right? I go down the first quarter, <sighs> and then Mac has pick six, sack fumble. Uh, it's twenty to three. Mm -hmm. 20 to nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you see me come back on the field. What are yeah. you thinking? Um, I think my tweets at the time were like, uh, Mac is the best player on this field. The Packers have no answer for this defense. The Bears are going to ruin Aaron Rodgers' life for the rest of the, his career. And then you came back and you did that. And, uh, yeah, that was a bad one. That, that was, was a really bad one. That was the uh, the post game where you had the spontaneous Southern accent. Yeah. I love that. You sprinkle that in sometimes. I my, do. My knee. Yeah. My, my, yeah. Knee, my yeah. trick knees. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. That was a bad one. Listen, we'll end, well, you get to. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You. You're 23 and Wait, 5 against the Bears. I, I know it. It's am I going to allow him to do that? Yeah, he just alpha you on Dan the Campbell out. is the only one that's allowed to call me that. Why? Because he's an alpha plus. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of grit. Yeah, he does. Yes. Yes. A lot of grit. All right. Thank you, Aaron. This, this, you were one of our white whales, so we appreciate it. Um, still don't like you, but I respect you more. I like you. 
I don't like what you've done to him. Don't say that. I like you and I really like you. 